Hey everyone, I'm doing another newsletter and by video. It's all good for from it last time. Yeah, uh, I'm probably gonna do three to four videos, not sure how many, but they'll just be like boom, 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 boom. Uh, first one will be what's going on since the last time I talked. Uh, what's going on like with me personally? And then vision and prayer requests. And if the Lord keeps pressing me, perhaps words of encouragement or what I feel the Lord's speaking. So, yeah, this is the first one. Um, so what's been going on? Well, since the last time I talked to you guys, I told you I was approached to make a wedding cake. Uh, I saw uh, a lot of support on that. And I thank everyone that chipped in and sent some money. Uh, I officially can say I made a wedding cake. Never thought I'd say that in my life. But I did that for our um, two of our leaders who got married this past November up in Hokkaido. Um, I will put pictures of the wedding cake on this video newsletter. But um, yeah, we went up to Hokkaido. And everyone, it was literally like a family wedding. Because Mosisa and Angie, it was their wedding, but everyone chipped in in some capacity. And everyone paid out of their own pocket, um, so to say, because I'm sure they got donations. But like one of our staff, she catered the whole thing. Um, decorations were all like handmade. Everything. And it was really, really cool. And yeah, uh, I w made the wedding cake. It was not like your fancy, like gigantic cake, like stacked and all that. Um, but I am very happy with it, and it's cool because the Lord even seemed like he was really in it. Because I said yes, not realizing how much of an undertaking it actually was. And especially with me being a groomsman still. And on the day of um, the rehearsal dinner, I was making the cake, and there were tons of setbacks. And if it wasn't for my friend Levi helping me, I could not have done it on my own. And so I definitely know the Lord sent Levi to help me, but we managed to finish the cake. It was ready for the wedding and the bride, Angie, when she saw it and screamed, I was like, yes, yes, Lord, thank you. But it was amazing because it was supposed to be a season when with COVID and all that stuff where Angie Mosesi could not go to California or Fiji to celebrate with her family and friends. Um, they've grew up with. And just how in a season when it should have been a lot of loss, there should have been a lot of tears that the Lord really came in for them. And they felt like they were lacking nothing. And that ministers to me as a whole, especially when it feels like there should be loss. But the Lord keeps pouring and pouring blessing on me, on us, on those that choose to follow him. So that was really cool. And that ministered to me. Um, a couple other things that have gone on. I've been discipling quite a few guys, as you know, and it's been really cool because the Lord has blessed me because right now, well, I'll go with the current ones I've discipled through YWAM. Two, the two that I discipled during my DTS, Levi and Hunter, um, both felt called to come back to Japan. Levi has since joined us officially, and Hunter will be staffing and being a missionary in Osaka with something called J Cafe. And he'll be doing that for at least six months, but then he's going to pray and see if he's supposed to transition to uh, Tokyo. So more missionaries are coming to Japan. More missionaries are coming here, and that's really, really encouraging. And then through the guys I've discipled through High BA, um, I've watched with them for a while, and specifically one named Samuel. And he's now in New Zealand doing university. But I did a phone call one-on-one -on -one with him recently. And he's getting it with the Lord. He's like truly embracing it. You can just tell he's learning how to walk in vulnerability, how to walk in discipleship. He's learning how to pursue a relationship with the Lord, intimacy. And it blessed my heart to see that he's recognizing that he is a son that he is a son of God and that he is loved by God and he can hear his voice. 
And so just to see the way he's walking right now, like I'm so proud because it ministers to me because it makes me feel like, oh, I'm doing something right. And it's really cool because I'm also kind of walking with his brother Isaac right now. And I encourage Sam to call his brother and uh, he's an older brother. Uh, Sam's the older brother. And I encourage him to call his younger brother Isaac to just talk with him and even share that vulnerability. And Sam did it pretty quickly. And hearing from Isaac a couple of days later, just how blessed and encouraged he was from that was just so awesome. So you're seeing young men learning to walk and that they don't need to put a facade of like, I know everything. I'm strong. You can be strong, but you can also walk in vulnerability and still show strength. And they're learning that. I think they're truly grasping what the Lord talks about when he says, um, the weak will stand strong, the poor will stand rich. They're grasping that now. And that's so cool. And then my other uh, one I've been discipling, Nate, he just left for Norway. He's doing a school, a secondary school of YWAM called uh, SBS, School of Biblical Studies, I believe. Um, and he's overcome so much, so much. And now he's going there to do some to do that and it's like a 10 month school and yeah it's cool because god's redeeming something that i don't know if i've shared with everyone but discipleship has been a thing in my heart even when i didn't realize how much it was and when i was in my early 20s i tried to walk with a couple people a couple guys but i was definitely doing it without the lord and i failed them i failed them badly I was did not know how to lead them. I did not know how to love on them. And when hard things came up, I abandoned them. And that weighed on me for a very long time. But now to see the Lord redeeming that has been encouraging because I understand discipleship now is living life with them, laughing with them, crying with them, sometimes taking a lot of their anger, but then calling them higher and in love and confronting them. But the biggest thing is just like Jesus, it's live life with them, live life with them daily. And see where I've come from then and where I am now and how God's redeeming it's really cool. And how it's going to be pouring in more to the Japanese because I'm doing it through high BA also with a couple of freshmen right now. When we get, I never thought I'd have this. When we get into this, our small group and discussion time, I used to think I have nothing to offer when it comes to discussing scripture and things like that in God. But to have that and they get excited and they're telling me, David, we want you in our group. And talking and having some guys being like, I wish this was going on longer. It encourages me. So it's like, I am reaching to young men. I'm reaching to the Japanese. And they are going to go out and branch out and do it to others. And so it's like, it's just a really cool net, I guess you can say. So it's really cool to see the Lord moving in that area. And so I'm blessed and encouraged. Um, yeah, the couple, I've been, I was able to go to homeless ministry one or two times, but it's been a little hard. Uh, but it's been cool to see friends and just see a couple people still faithfully there. And oh, I'm hoping once things clear up a little bit more, I can start doing that again more consistently. Um, yeah. And then this was, this might not sound cool, but recently, one of the main reasons why I felt really called to Japan was because of just showing that they are not orphans, that they are loved and their life is valuable. And so I've always had a strong thing to contend against suicide, to intercede for it. And I don't know if I actually shared this with you guys, but um, I actually witnessed a suicide. I was in the train, in the front cart, looking out the front, and someone jumped in front of it. And I heard the noise of this body hitting the train. I felt the tra the body go under the cart. And I saw them carry the body away. And I got to watch as so many of the people there seemed very numb and emotionless to all of it. It seemed very second nature to them. And it was very sad. And apparently to this day, I think with, within my Tokyo, since it's been kind of revamped since 2008, I'm the only person who's ever witnessed a suicide. 
So that being said, it's been on my heart a lot to pray and contend against it. And it's really cool because I lead intercession. And most recently, I felt to lead, contend for suicide, suicides. And on that day, people, friends, families, various people that have I don't talk to about this, that are not in Japan, all were posting about Japanese suicide numbers going up. And to pray for it. And so I know the Lord is doing something there. I know the Lord is moving there. And we just need to keep contending. We need to keep interceding and speaking life into this area. And so for those of you that feel that burden on your heart, can continue to contend, continue to pray. Because there has been breakthrough. There has been breakthrough and the enemy is fighting back. And that's why the numbers have gone up, because there's hopelessness increasing in Japan. But before 2020, the numbers were going down and were at an all-time low. So keep contending, keep praying. And then the last thing, I guess, the biggest thing that I wanted to share that's going on within YM Tokyo is um, that I've been a part of is, I talk, talked about it, I'm kind of on like a lot of different worship teams now. And I play the cajon, the box drum. And so I play cajon for like our worships in the morning as a bass. I play cajon for a thing we do called living room, which is we can't meet in person, so we do it on YouTube right now. And so if you ever get a chance, go to YM Tokyo and you can find old th- living rooms and most of them I'm playing, but it's cool. It's there's, a, there's Japanese in there and it's all about reaching and speaking and ministering to the Japanese through worship, prophetic words, things like that. And so it's really cool to be a part of that. And then also I am now cajoning, box drumming at the worship at High BA. So I'm getting very involved with a lot of it. And so that's really, really cool. But the person who owns the cajon is moving. So we're going to be cajonless. And so one of my prayer requests that I'll talk about later is I would love to have money come in so I can buy a cajon for the space. Not just for me, but for those that will be, that can want to learn it and contribute to worship. Because I'm learning that worship is so much more than just singing vocally. There's so much to worship. And even in just simply playing an instrument, like... I hate to say it, like the song Little Drummer Boy, the Christmas one. Like when he says, I played my best for him and all that, there's worship in that and glorifying the Lord just through the hitting, like hitting a box. And so, yeah. If you're giving a chance, I would encourage you guys just listen to the living room sometimes. Um, it's currently on hi- hiatus till the beginning of next year, but it's a fun and cool time to minister to the Japanese. So, Yeah. I will stop this video right now, and the next one will be probably about me and what's going on in my life. So, okay. Bye-bye.